we've seen that the way to interpret the acceleration is to compare um, which way it's pointing with the way that the velocity is pointing. Um, so you compare their directions. One thing I just want to say parenthetically is um, we haven't talked about comparing the length of the acceleration and the length of the velocity. Uh, I just want to make a parenthetical comment. It doesn't make any sense to compare how long this arrow is and how long this arrow is. Uh, in these examples, I'm drawing the acceleration the same length as the velocity, but that's just for convenience. Uh, it doesn't, you don't compare these lengths, and you can see why. What are the units for velocity? What are the units for velocity? I hope that was really easy for you. The units for velocity are meters per second. And what are the units for acceleration? I hope that was pretty easy too. The units for acceleration are meters per second squared. Well, you can't compare things, you can't compare two magnitudes that have different units. So it doesn't make any sense to um, compare uh, the length of this arrow and the length of this arrow because those lengths are in different units. That's like comparing apples and oranges. Just like you can't compare feet and pounds. It doesn't make any sense to say, um, that, uh, it doesn't make any sense to say that eight pounds is more than five feet, right? It doesn't make any sense to say that eight pounds is more than five feet. Eight is bigger than five, but pounds and feet can't be compared. So you can't compare eight pounds and five feet. Well, by the same token, you can't compare the length of something that's in meters per second with the length of something that's in meters per second squared. So it makes really no difference um, what the comparison is in, the two, in these two lengths. What we're comparing is their directions. The directions tell us a lot about whether you're speeding up or slowing down. To make things convenient, I think I'm going to give you examples where the acceleration is the same length as the velocity, but there's no real meaning in that. Uh, I, hope, I hope what I just said there uh, made sense. Um, but if it didn't, it wasn't really crucial anyway. So don't worry if you didn't understand what I just talked about for the last three or four uh, minutes. It's not really all that crucial. What is crucial is, again, to know that the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. Instead, it tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. When the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, you're speeding up. When the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, you're slowing down. That's crucial. Make sure you understand that. Which way is this object accelerating? Trick question, we have no idea. We have no idea. Um, it's impossible to tell. Which way is this object moving? All we can tell from this is that we're moving to the right. But we have no idea which way we're accelerating. We just have no idea which way we're accelerating. Remember that which way you're accelerating has nothing to do with which way you're moving. All this tells us is which way we're moving. It doesn't tell us which way we're accelerating. Now suppose I tell you we're slowing down. Now you know which way we're accelerating. We must be accelerating anti-parallel to the velocity. So again, just telling you which way we were moving didn't tell you the acceleration. Only when I tell you whether we're speeding up or slowing down can you figure out the acceleration. The acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. Which way is this object accelerating? Which way is this object accelerating? Trick question, we have no idea. We know it's moving down, but the way you're moving has nothing to do with which way you're accelerating. There's no way to tell which way this object is accelerating. We cannot tell which way this object is accelerating. Which way is this object moving? Which way is this object moving? Who knows? The acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. We have no idea which way this object is moving. It's the velocity's job to tell you which way you're moving. So we have no idea which way we're moving here. Remember that the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. It tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. So we don't have any idea which way we're moving. Um, is this object speeding up or slowing down? Well, we can't tell that either, because remember, you can't really interpret the acceleration without comparing it to the velocity. Uh, since I haven't told you the velocity, we can't really get much out of this at all. We don't know, even know whether we're speeding up or slowing down. Now can you tell whether we're speeding up or slowing down? Yeah, now we know we're speeding up. So you really need both the acceleration and the velocity to tell whether you're speeding up or slowing down, because you have to compare the acceleration to the velocity. So we know this object is speeding up. This object is speeding up. And which way is this object moving? Now we know it's moving to the right. Not because of this acceleration, but because of the velocity. The velocity tells you which way you're moving.
Which way is this object moving? We have no idea. The acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. Only the velocity tells you which way you're moving. Again, this doesn't really give us much information at all. We can't even tell whether we're speeding up or slowing down because we can't tell yet whether this is parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity. So this gives us very little information, uh, very little definite specific information. Which way is this object moving? Which way is this object moving? We don't know. The acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. However, um, remember that in, in these videos, we're going to be talking about constant acceleration. So in these videos, we're not just going to say that we're accelerating to the left, but we're going to say that we're going to be continually accelerating to the left. So we're going to keep accelerating to the left uh, indefinitely, basically, uh, while we're going through uh, the problems here. For the whole course of the problem, we're, we're going to be um, accelerating in the same direction. Well, we don't have to be moving to the left to accelerate to the left. But if you accelerate to the left for long enough, eventually you do have to start moving to the left. If you accelerate to the left for long enough, eventually you do have to start moving to the left. That's a little complicated. I'll say it one more time. Um, we can't tell whether this object is moving left right now. We can't tell whether this object is moving left right now because we can't see the velocity. But we know that if we continue to accelerate in this way for a very long time, eventually we will have to start moving to the left. Let me show you what that is. Let's say we start moving to the right. So our path would look like this. We're moving to the right. We're moving to the right. Um, but are we speeding up or slowing down? Well, we know we're slowing down because the velocity is anti-parallel to the acceleration. So we're moving to the right but we're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. We're going to be moving more and more slowly. Well, you can't slow down forever. Eventually, you're going to be going so, so slow that for an instant, you're not moving at all. Eventually, you're going to slow down so much that for an instant, your velocity is zero. All right, and then what happens if you keep accelerating to the left? Remember, we're going to deal with constant acceleration. If you keep accelerating to the left, well, then you have to pass through zero, and then you do have to start moving to the left. So eventually, we are going to have to start moving to the left. And then the path is going to look like this. Um, so again, we're going to be moving to the right, but we're going to be moving to the right slower and slower and slower until eventually, for an instant, our velocity is zero. And then since we're still accelerating left, eventually we're going to have to start moving left as well. So if you're accelerating to the left, you don't have to be moving left right now. But if you accelerate to the left for long enough, eventually you will be moving to the left. So the path here would be moving to the right, but eventually very slowly. For an instant, we're motionless, and then we start moving to the left. So to the right, and then to the left. Um, now, we're doing with one-dimensional motion, so really the path we go out along will be the same as the path we go back towards. Um, but in these uh, videos, I'm going to be drawing the outward path above the inward path. Just because if I tried to put both of these paths on the same line, things would start to get confused. We can't really draw the outward path in the same exact place um, as the path that's going back because uh, we can't put two things on top of each other. Um, so we're going to show the path like this. First we're moving to the right, and then we're moving to the left. Although, of course, we're not actually dropping down. What we're really doing is moving to the right and then moving to the left at the same level because we're dealing with one-dimensional motion. But I'm going to draw it like this just so I can show the one, one of the paths in one place and the path returning in the other place. So what's the velocity look like for the return path? What's the velocity look like for the return path? Well, now the velocity would be to the left, because now we're moving to the left. And remember, in these videos, we're dealing with constant acceleration. So the acceleration is still to the left like it was before. I guess I should draw the acceleration arrow about the same length as I drew it up here, because it's supposed to be constant acceleration. But you can see I'm not really worrying very much about the lengths of the arrows here. I'm being a little bit sloppy. I'm not worrying about the lengths of the arrows. What we're mainly focusing on here is the directions of the arrows. So I hope you'll cut me a little slack there. All right. Uh, all right, so I hope you can see why on the outward path, 
the velocity is to the right and the acceleration is to the left because we're moving right but we're slowing down. Uh, but then on the uh, return path, now we're moving to the left, so the velocity is to the left. And now are we going to be speeding up or slowing down? Along this path, are we speeding up or slowing down? Well, now the velocity and the acceleration are parallel. So now we're speeding up. So again, what it's going to look like is moving to the right, but slower and slower and slower, until for an instant we're motionless, and then we start moving to the left, and faster and faster and faster. So again, the path is moving to the right, slower and slower and slower, for an instant we're motionless, and then moving to the left faster and faster and faster. That's what has to happen if we're continually accelerating to the left.